Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's a critically acclaimed romantic musical comedy and drama that surprisingly is being nominated for 14 Academy Awards. It just won seven Golden Globes. It's directed by the same guy who gave us Whiplash, which became a success in 2014. And it stars Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. Both have been previously in films like Crazy Stupid Love, the comedy with Steve Carell and Julianne Moore, and the underrated uh, crime drama Gangster Squad called La La Land. A story about a jazz musician and an actress are both struggling to make it to the big world and of course they fall in love with each other in Los Angeles and by the way this movie is on my list for the best films of 2016 so there you go so it's once again Ryan Goslin, Emma Stone with John Legend the singer J.K. Simmons who just won an Oscar for his performance in Whiplash and he's been in several movies like Juno, Spider-Man and all the rest as well as those farmers insurance commercials along with Mosworthy D. Witt, Tom Everett Scott who's been best known for his role in That Fain You Do a movie that came out 20 years ago that was directed by Tom Hanks who's also the star of the film Finn Wood Rock, Sonia Mizuno, Kali Hernandez, Megan Fay, Damon Gupton, and Josh Pence. Written and directed by Damien Chazelle, who did Whiplash. The movie begins set inside the Los Angeles Highway, which had a huge crowd of traffic around which leads to uh, a song and dance number called Another Day of Sun. We meet an actress named Mia who's played by Emma Stone who suddenly um, got into a road rage with Sebastian who's played by Ryan Goslin who happens to be a jazz musician. Uh, during that day she was getting ready to have an audition for the part that she's about to play in, but it didn't go so well. She also works at a coffee shop, you know, during the day. So apparently she lives inside a beautiful apartment with her two roommates just to take her to a lavish party in the Hollywood Hills. And just to cheer her up after such a bad day. Yeah, which has a song called Someone in the Crowd. But then she took a long walk only to find out that her car has been told. Meanwhile, Sebastian just lives at a small house with his girlfriend. And just to pack up and, you know, just uh, doing some... Um, practicing on all of his jazz music that he loves to play because he also works inside a restaurant where he just plays certain types of jazz music, mostly Christmas music until he got fired by the owner of the restaurant who's played by J.K. Simmons. Mia basically overhears uh, his music before they bumped into each other again with him already feeling the very angry about that he lost his job. Months later, Mia suddenly runs into Sebastian only to find out that he's basically uh, plays inside an 80's uh, pop cover band. Yeah, because they were playing songs like Take On Me and and I Ran and all of that. Yeah. He's also a keyboardist um, in the band and Mia just came over just to see what he's doing and you know playing some music and how he was 
going through since he lost his job. They're about to leave together, which Mia was trying to find uh, her car that she parked somewhere. And which leads to this beautiful um, shot, which you saw in the movie posters already. Yeah, where Mia just had a yellow dress on and, and Sebastian just you know, has his uh, white shirts and pant long black pants and yeah, you know, they're dancing the night away on the hill you know, where there was a light pole and uh, a seat. Yeah, there you go. So the, it definitely shows a spark of chemistry right there. So, the next day, Mia had took Sebastian to a movie lot where she works, um, you know, where she does all the uh, editions of many movies and all that, because she definitely has her passion of, of acting. Well, Sebastian decided to take Mia to a jazz club because he explains his, his desire and passion for jazz, because that was part of his dream that he wants to be able to open a jazz club of his own. So Sebastian also suggested Mia to take her to to see a screening of the movie A Rebel Without a Claws. Yeah, the movie with uh, James Dean at a uh, local old theater called the Wallato. Yeah, it's a theater in Pasadena. Yeah, so, you know, they'd be able to um, you know, spend time, you know, just watching a classic movie, which didn't turn out so well as it seems, because, uh, but Mia suggested decided to just take uh, Sebastian to the Griffin Observatory, you know, just to look at all the, the beautiful uh, planets and telescopes and all of that, which leads to that big moment where... Yeah, they were up in the air dancing. It just it just looks beautiful the way they shot that. Yeah, Mia was trying to continue struggling so hard to to get the parts. Yeah, it wasn't going so well. Once again, you know she she had an opening at the theater, which she's gotten criticized by some people until finally um, one agent actually. Um, accepted her and well, what do you know she got the job and while Sebastian having hard times uh, trying to uh, practice uh, especially with his friend um, Keith who's played by John Legend because he actually invited uh, Sebastian to be a keyboardist for his uh, jazz band that he came up with and you know they're playing at at a local jazz uh, club. So f things were going pretty hard for him at times until, well, he finally um, got his chance. So now he, he finally has his own jazz club that he always wanted. And there you go. <laughs> um, I don't want to give away too much of the film, but you got to see it for yourself. Only The movie's only two hours and eight minutes at the most. But, I have some issues with the film, because even though it looks beautiful, I mean, the whole film was shot in this 50s uh, style, in a way, with some mix of 40s, even though it, it's set in, in the modern generation that we're in today, um, which didn't seem like it worked together when, when it comes to it, but that's okay. They, they tried. Um... But I, I love all the the musical uh, dance numbers that they had. Like um, there's even that uh, memorable song called "City of Stars," which I thought it worked so well with with Sebastian and Mia singing together, and um, any other um, songs that they they came up with too for the movie. Uh, Another day of sun, of course, as I mentioned, was a great number right there just for the start of the movie. Um, also, the fact that they, they managed to make this movie look more like, you know, like if it came out in the 50s, like it was shown uh, <laughs> in a 70 millimeter print, yeah, with the, 
because you saw the Cinema Scope logo at the beginning uh, after the that logo variation of Submit Entertainment logo. You have to try to make it look as as fifty ish as it could be. Yeah. But it looks really cool. But my only complaint about the film though was that it's just they they always criticize everything that they were gonna go for because they feel like, you know, everything's just not new anymore. Like jazz. I mean they they criticize jazz thinking that you know, it's it's gonna die, you know, everybody hates it, so on and so forth. It just goes on for a while. It's it's like come on, I get the idea already. Right? I mean compared to all the songs that we're getting nowadays with pop music and all this other crap that we're having, I almost feel like everything's dying <laughs> as we know it. But they didn't have to go f that far for for jazz or any other kind. I just feel like they really went overboard with that. And and of course the fact that you know Mia's just been failing a lot too. She's she's always pouting and you know she's feeling, you know, like she's not gonna make it into the world, like she just wanna kill herself or any other. But I mean like Sebastian said in the movie, she's just being a baby. There was also a scene where Mia decided to go out um, with one of her roommates um, and friends and you know, just to hang out you know, just do some chatting and all of that. Well, they were also uh, complaining about uh, movie theaters where it's all dirty and everything like that. Because uh, even though she was about to go to a movie theater that, that uh, she wanted to go but it's all happening at the same time. Well, she decided she's just going to go there anyway, and until um, until the movie was uh, was shut off and wasn't working anymore, and so they went out and had fun for themselves. As I mentioned before, when I uh, reviewed it, was when they did the a lovely night uh, performance. Yeah, you know, we see once again. Goslin and Stone dancing together you know, inside the the hills of of Hollywood, and you see um, the light pole once again, and, and and the bus stop. Just when they're about to finish that uh, beautiful number right there, it actually ends with you guessed it, a cell phone ringtone. Yeah, in fact, they're about to kiss too. And they had to end with that. It almost sounds like, like that um, the commercial that you saw in movie theaters where they tell you to uh, shut off your cell phones. Why did they have to put that in the movie? It just ruins the magic. It really does. I mean, if they're trying to do this for fun, then they knew they suck. <laughs> but I, I know I digress. I mean, it's a good moment, but they, they didn't need to throw the, the cell phone ringtone in there. Come on, man. That's just not right. I know, I know. I'm just, uh, I'm just going overboard with that. But, um, but it looks great, though. Uh, but Goslin and Stone definitely had terrific chemistry. They really spark on screen. Just like how they, their performances were in Crazy Stupid Love and Gangster Squad, but this time they now have a movie together where it's finally being nominated and just won Golden Globes, and hopefully it might earn something uh, for the Oscars because it just got nominated for 14 Academy Awards. Hard to believe. It's really big for such a small movie. It's only thirty million dollars yeah although yeah thirty million is not too bad it's actually uh, very good though for for its budget um, definitely uh, has that Tinseltown feel to it it really did even though it's being set in in this generation as we know it 
Um, but yes, the composing and the choreography were well done. Surprisingly enough, um, the choreographer was uh, Mandy Moore. Yes, the singer Mandy Moore. And the music is done by Justin Hurwitz. So it came up with all the songs uh, that were sure delight. Yeah. The cinematography was was well made. Definitely shows the once again the 50s style look to it by uh, Linus uh, Sanguin. Perfect. Uh, it's a fun movie. Definitely romantic. And you definitely will have a good time. So um, I recommend the film La La Land. And I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.